This is a box turtle, historically known to be primarily terrestrial. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the water. So, why did I just put a box turtle in water? Box turtles are supposed to be land turtles, right? In fact, many people still confuse them to be tortoises, which they are not. Well, it's really all because of stuff like this. Outdated and inaccurate information that still persists both in books and on the internet. This is a book I grew up on that my girls love to hear now as bedtime stories. And well, it's called Box Turtle at Long Pond. It's a beautifully illustrated book. I highly recommend it, except for this one part. The turtle slowly makes his way down to the pond. He carefully stretches out his neck to drink. Box turtles cannot swim. That's the purpose behind this video. Box turtles can swim. They can also submerge. They can float if they want. They can eat in water. And water is crucial for them to stay healthy and grow properly. I can't tell you how many box turtles we've come in contact with as a rescue that are suffering from inadequate hydration. Water is their friend. They have a deep relationship with it and they require it to first and foremost grow a smooth shell. We see a lot of box turtles that were raised in dry beddings uh, in fish tanks with super hot heat lamps creating a constant greenhouse effect for them where the shell is either lumpy like you see in pyramided tortoises or even deflated. Sometimes they are so deformed they look like some kind of fat lizard above anything else. I grew up on books like Box Turtle at Long Pond. They remind me of my childhood. It's very nostalgic for me. But just one little sentence like that can be harmful for the animals, for people that keep them and don't know anything else about them. You can tell when a box turtle has been raised in an environment that's way too dry. They'll have cracked skin. Their color will be pale. The shell is a complete mess. And the animals don't really behave the way they're supposed to. They're strong animals capable of moving on both land and water. And remember, box turtles have slightly webbed feet, which is one of the reasons they are in the emided family, putting them more closely related to pond turtles than any tortoise out there. So what's the deal with the box turtle in the beginning of this video? Well, it's the same one as this guy right here, and it is called the Cohelan box turtle, Terrapine Cohela, and it is actually known as the United States Fish and Wildlife Service as the aquatic box turtle. These turtles come only from the Cuatro Cienegas in Mexico. They are found in a very restricted, small wetland area where their main threat is the fact that things are getting too dry and also water pollution. These turtles are so endangered that they are included in the top 25 plus most endangered turtle species on the planet. They come from a very unique habitat and they are at least 90% aquatic. But if you take a look at them, this is Wrangler right here. He's the very first Cohelan box turtle I ever hatched. He's a box turtle through and through. He's got all the structural traits that you would see in other box turtles. The head differs a little bit, and of course their habits differ. They're a little bit more streamlined to move through the water as an adaptation to their environment over time, but they have the plastral hinge, which enables them to completely close up, only slightly webbed feet, and they are perfectly suited for terrestrial life as well. These animals, just like an Eastern box turtle, will take to leaf litter and pine litter, burrow into it, and look for invertebrates to eat, and they will also eat some other items like mushrooms. They're truly incredible turtles, and a new assessment is urgently needed in nature where they are because it's believed that between only 1,700 and 2,000 of these still exist in nature today. We happen to be the only private facility in the Studbook program for these amazing animals. They are a flagship species and our window into the world of box turtles and their full relationship with water. So let's go outside now and see what some of the other types of box turtles here at Garden State Tortoise are doing on this 61 degree December day. Now, a quick disclaimer for you guys. Just because we're talking about the relationship that box turtles have with water in this video does not mean you go let one go in the middle of the lake. It will drown. Box turtles are found in more shallow bodies of water, like streams, farm ponds, and marshes. They can't swim like a sea turtle, and they can't swim like a big snapping turtle can. Wait, Otis. This is a wonderful example right here of what some of these turtles are capable of. This is a male eastern box turtle. Although he looks like Otis, he is not Otis. He's outside here in our aquascape ecosystem. And this is one of the enclosures where we keep some eastern box turtles. 
This animal is perfectly equipped to handle this kind of aquascape and also terrain around it. Because of all the rocks and logs jutting in and out of the water, this animal feels comfortable enough to allow himself to get into the water and even drift all the way out into close to the center because he's just gonna drift back eventually or swim and maybe even submerge to get out. This is not an animal that is panicked. This is not an animal that is in any danger of drowning. He knows exactly what he's doing. And to boot, it's December. It's a warm day, about 61 degrees, but it's not like this animal is at optimal temperature like in the 80s or even low 90s. He is very content, very calm, knows what he's doing, hydrating himself, and you know what? He may choose to even hibernate underwater somewhere because they can. Here is a prime and perfect example of what box turtles are capable of doing. This is the Gulf Coast box turtle, Terrapine Carolina Major. It's a subspecies of the famous eastern box turtle, which is Otis. These animals could literally compete with the Cohelan or aquatic box turtle for the title aquatic box turtle. And this is proof right here. This animal is coming up out of the water on a warm day. She has actually been spending most of her time in this pond here in the enclosure. She's even attempting to hibernate, as you can see here, because she was coming up out of the pine needles and all the debris at the bottom of this pond. So she's been down in there, all nestled and happy, and uh, coming up for some air, just like a painted turtle would. So we're inside our outdoor Gulf Coast box turtle enclosure where they have lived for many, many years. Uh, they spend the entire year outside here in New Jersey, even though they are species that comes from areas like Northern Florida. These turtles love water. And I'm gonna show you where two of our other ones always hibernate every single year. They're somewhere right in here. I just gotta root around to find them. This pen was designed with their habitat in mind. And Gulf Coast box turtles being from areas like Florida and Louisiana, they love swampy areas. They will spend a considerable amount of time in it, including the entire winter. Look at that. That is one of our big, beautiful male Gulf Coast box turtles. It's got that beautiful white head and those huge mandibles. Now, never go disturbing a wild turtle in hibernation, but this isn't the wild. This is captivity, and these turtles are not naturally from here. So it's nice to know where they are so that we can do some quick health assessments on them. Being a mild day, 61 degrees, I'm in a t-shirt. It's okay to check out these turtles because they are in fact ours, but in the wild, you would never want to disturb uh, a hibernating turtle. And of course, you would never want to do it no matter what on an extremely cold day. But he looks good, and he is displaying that love and that relationship that box turtles have with water. Let's put him back. Box turtles of all kinds use water in their habitats and they are really never found very far from it. Take cobalt, the blue box turtle that I radio track right here in South Jersey. That animal is a salt marsh turtle. He's eating things in the salt marsh, using the water, using the mud, and he never leaves it. He even hibernates right at the edge of it. Now, if you're thinking, that some of these turtles I'm showing you here at Garden State Tortoise are only exhibiting these behaviors because they're in captivity, think again. Take a look at this incredible footage that our friend Jordan Donini sent us. He's from the Southwest Florida Turtle Project and his student Cody Weber took this amazing footage of a radio tracked Florida box turtle, Terrapine Bowerai, swiftly moving through the water and check it out, the animal is fully submerged. So there you go, there's your proof both in captivity and in the wild of these animals that have so sorely been mistaken, as far as their habits go, using water just like an aquatic species would. As I've said, all box turtles have a relationship with water, including Mexican ones such as the Mexican box turtle and the Yucatan box turtle. These types spend so much time in overly damp environments that they get erosion and degrading to the shell, as you can see right here on this female Yucatan. When it comes to the ornate and the desert, remember, just because an animal is called an arid or 
desert species. We as humans dubbed them that. We gave them that title. But they're really the ones that know what's going on. These animals, even though sometimes they can come from very desert-like habitats, seek out humidity almost 90% of the time, if not more. And they do appreciate water and absolutely can move through it, similar to how an eastern box turtle would or even a Florida box turtle would. In the end, what is it that we really know about these animals? We're not inside their heads. We're not experiencing their habitats. We're just comfortable with what we've been taught over the years. And anytime something challenges that, we become uncomfortable and we naturally try to fight against it. So that's been the purpose behind this video is to throw out that harmful, outdated information and accept the fact that these animals are not tortoises, they have slightly webbed feet, and they have a relationship with water. <laughs>